Hi, my name is Kevin Jones, and in this walkthrough, we'll see how to use the rock solid knowledge FIDO component to provide passwordless authentication on a website. So before we write any code, let's see this in action. So here I have a website that's using ASP.NET identity under the covers, and we have a couple of standard mechanisms here. I can register a user, but notice when I click on register, I enter my email address, but no passwords. And it asks me for a device name. And this device name is the name of a FIDO device. I'm using a UB key here. So let's enter that as the name and click on submit. And it's going to ask me to interact with the device, but I'm going to store my credentials on this device. Before I do that, the device requires a pin. So I enter the pin, go next, and then I interact with the device. And now the device is registered. Now, if I go to login, rather than asking for a password, it asks me for the device pin. I go next. I then interact with the device, in this case by touching it, and I'm now authenticated. And what we'll see in this walkthrough is how to do this. This walkthrough builds on a previous walkthrough on this site where I integrated the FIDO component with ASP.NET identity. So if you want to know how to do that, you can go and watch that walkthrough first. The code I have here will build on and replace some of the code from that original walkthrough. So in the previous walkthrough, we used ASP.NET identity and we scaffolded the pages as we had to change some of the functionality. I'm not gonna need that scaffolding anymore, so I'm gonna remove that. So inside areas here, I'll get rid of everything inside pages apart from view start. And this is now back in the default state of an ASP.NET identity application. I also want to change some of the URLs we use. So if I go into views, shared, and login partial, in here currently the register and the login endpoints point at ASP.NET identity. So I'm not going to use those directly here. So I'll change the register endpoint so that it goes to a start registration action on my controller. And we have a controller here called Fido. We could call this controller account, I guess, as we're doing account registration and account login here. Similarly, for the login endpoint, we're going to go to a login action again on my FIDO controller. So the first thing I want to do is to provide registration. So if I go to my FIDO controller, we have a start registration endpoint. And this is what we had from the previous walkthrough. If I look at the view for this endpoint, it just asks for a device name. And we need to change this now. This will become our user registration endpoint as well as the device registration endpoint. So here, as well as asking for the device name, we are going to ask for the user's email address. So I'll add another section here, which is the email. I'm also going to validate the device name. And then my device registration, this model name is not really correct now. So let me change this and call this registration instead. And then inside here, as well as having the device name, we want the email. And let's do what ASP.NET Identity does and add the correct annotations to these as well. So my device name is required and my email address is required and we mark it as email address. So when we go to this registration page, when we click on submit, it's going to call the register action on the controller. So I look at the controller. Currently this action initiates the FIDO registration and we need this to change. We only want to initiate the FIDO registration if the user has been registered correctly. So before I call initiate registration on the FIDO component, I need to register the user with ASP.NET identity. So to do this, I need some extra services inside this controller. So currently we're injecting the FIDO authentication component and the sign-in manager, as well as these, I'll need the user manager and also to work the same way that ASP.NET identity does, we need a logger and something called the email sender. And we use the email sender if we need to confirm the email before we register the user. And I'll assign these to fields within the class. So back in register, the first thing I want to do is this. I want to check the model state. If the model state is valid, we'll create a new identity user, and then we'll create that user using the user manager. So we register the user with ASP.NET identity. What we'll do in a moment is we'll then go off and we'll initiate registration on, on the FIDO component. And if that registration fails, we'll then delete this user. But we need to check to see if we can create this user before we go forward. For example, the user might already exist 
inside ASP.NET Identity, in which case this call will fail. If this call succeeds, following the standard ASP.NET Identity code, we log out that the user's been created, and we check to see if we need to send a confirmation email. And if we need to do that, then we follow that process. If we don't need to do that, then it's here that we can do the FIDO registration. So I initiate the registration, get back the challenge, and then return that challenge back to the browser. If we haven't created the user successfully, we add any errors to the model state. And then if we need to, we return back to the start registration page, returning this model. And that will display any errors on the page. However, this initiate registration call needs the user's ID. And we can no longer get that from the user identity. Instead, we get it from the model. And it's model.email. Okay, so the initiate registration call here will get back a challenge. And we return that challenge back to the browser to use with the FIDO component. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so the page looks like this. On here, we're calling a function called register that's provided in a JavaScript file called fido.js. And if we look at that, again, this is code that was in the previous walkthrough. Now, if we want to do passwordless, we need to add some extra information to this. Before we call create on the navigator, we'll add this field called an authenticator selection. And what this tells the component is that the credential will be what's known as a required key, and also that user verification is required. And this will tell the device to store the user credentials on that device. And we pass this as an extra value in the credentials.create call. So we pass this authenticator selection here. So if credentials.create is successful, we then post back to this callback URL. And this callback URL is FIDO complete registration. Now, if this registration fails, I'll need to delete the user you've just created as part of ASP.NET Identity. And to do that, I'll need the user's ID. So I'm going to pass that as a parameter on this URL. So on the URL, I say question mark username equals model.userID. I can then use that inside the complete registration callback. So inside that callback, as well as passing up the FIDO registration response, I'm also going to pass up the username. And we'll get this from the query string. I call complete registration. And if that fails, I'm returning bad request, but I also need to delete the user from the database. So to do that, I reach into the database using the user manager and find the user. And then I call delete async to delete that user. And if everything succeeds, we are now registered with ASP.NET identity and we've completed the FIDO registration. Okay, so before I run this, let me just fix a couple of things. So on start registration, we currently have the authorized attribute and we needed that in the previous code. We don't need that now, so I can get rid of that. And then in layout CSHTML, we still have the link to do start registration and we no longer need that. Again, that's a hangover from the previous code. So again, I can delete that. Okay, so now if I run the application, I'm back in the browser. If I click on the register link, this now takes me to the registration page where I register my email and the device. So enter my email address, enter a name for the device, and click on submit. So the first thing that happens is that the device asks me for a pin. Now I, I only get this if I don't have a pin already set. So here I set a pin, click on next, then touch my key, and the device is now registered. So now that it's registered, we can build the code to do passwordless authentication. So what about the login process? Well, it turns out that this is now simpler than it was when we had ASP.NET Identity managing the login. So previously we had this. We were calling authenticate async on a two-factor user ID scheme. This was against a temporary cookie. If that succeeded, we were then calling initial authentication against the device and then redirecting back to the browser and having the browser interact with the device. And then we go through this whole process of calling complete authentication on the FIDO component and then re-logging in using the sign-in manager. So now we can strip most of this out. For login, we can call initiate authentication. And from this, we're going to return the view that's going to contain the challenge that will be used to challenge the device. Now, we don't have a username now. Previously, we'd have a username from the authentication and we'd use that to initiate the authentication. But now we don't need a username. So here, I'm going to pass null. 
remember that now the user credentials are held on the device itself. So we send this view back to the browser and the view looks like this. And currently this view, we call a complete login method that again is inside fido.js. And into here we're passing this challenge, the relying party ID, some keys, and then a callback URL to complete the login if the challenge against the device succeeds. This JavaScript function looks like this, but now that we're holding the credentials on the device, we can make this function much simpler. So now I no longer need these keys, so we can strip that out. The call to credentials.get doesn't take the allow credentials anymore, and we don't need this base64 keys parameter here. So now we create the challenge, we call get against the navigator. If that succeeds, we're going to send the encoded result back to our callback URL. And then if that succeeds, we're going to redirect back to the home page. So from login CSHTML, we don't need to pass in this keys value anymore. We're just passing in this, the challenge, the relying party ID, and the return URL. So we said this calls back, and it calls back to this FIDO complete login URL, which again is on the FIDO controller. And again, we can make this much simpler. So again, I'm going to call complete authentication. But now if that succeeds, I still need to sign in. But now I'm going to sign in with sign in async. And sign in async takes a user. And this user is of type identity user. And we can get that identity user from the user store. So here, rather than the code to authenticate async and to build these claims, I can call user manager find by email async. I can pass in the user ID. And that user ID is in the authentication result that comes back from the complete authentication call. And that user ID will be, in our case, the email of the registered user. So we get the user from the user store, and we can then sign in with that user. Again, if the authentication result is an error, we return bad request. Otherwise, we return OK. And then back in the JavaScript, if we return OK, we redirect back to the home page. So let's try this. If I restart the application, and if I log in, it now takes me straight to the authenticator. So previously, we added a pin to the authenticator. So I enter that pin here first, go next. We then interact with the authenticator, and that takes me back to the home page. And notice now on the home page, we authenticated, and we have a set of claims that come as part of this user. So let me just show one more thing here. On the home controller, the privacy endpoint is marked with the authorized attribute. So I can only hit this endpoint if I'm authorized. So if I go back to the browser, click on privacy, sure enough, we'll authenticate it. If I log out and click on privacy, it takes me to the wrong login page. So we have to be careful here. So there's one other thing that we need to configure. So if I go back into the code and on my startup.cs page, I need to call configure application cookie and specify the new login path, which is fido slash login. So if I restart and now click on the privacy link, it takes me to the two-factor authentication. Again, I interact with the device and now we're authenticated with a set of claims.